Hello everybody, my name is Jim and this is my reading wrap up for November 2023. This was a much better month than October. I finished a book, I read five books from front to back, and I started a book. So whatever books I didn't read in October, I read this this month in November. I, I might do another video about some of the things that have been going on, you know, how NaNoWriMo went, uh, if you guys are interested in, in that at all. But for this, I'm going to keep it to the books that I read in November, and I'm going to start with They're There by Tommy Orange. This was Native American Heritage Month. I did not read this book for that reason. I was going to read it anyway, but, you know, it did just so happen to coincide with that. Unfortunately, I didn't get to finish it. I am about 62% of the way through the book, so I do expect to finish it in December, but the premise of this book is it follows a number of characters. There are multiple perspectives. These characters are really just reflecting their lives, their day-to-days, their hardships. There has been a lot of talk about the Oakland powwow, and I believe that all of these characters are going to eventually come together, possibly meet and mingle at the Oakland powwow. So far, this is a low four, high three for me. And the reason is because with multiple perspectives, it's really difficult to create many characters that someone can latch on to. And so far in this book, we are introduced to the characters once, and then we move on to the next person. So I haven't been able to really grab anybody yet and really love any of the characters yet. I do like what some of them are doing. I like some of the paths that they are taking in their lives. I have enjoyed Jackie's story so far and Opal and Orville, but I also think it's because those three are a bit more interwoven with each other and I get to see a little bit more of them and their conversations that, you know, I've latched onto them a little bit more. I wish that I had that with some of the other characters that I was introduced to. It's still a book that I'm very interested in reading. I think that Tommy Orange, despite that, has given his characters unique voices and his prose is very well done. So, you know, there are pros and cons. <laughs> and so far, that's why it's it's kind of a low four, high three, but I'm not finished yet. We'll see how this ends up next month when I finally finish the book and can wrap this up for real. The next book is Clowns vs. Spiders by Jeff Strand. I saw clowns. <laughs> I thought that it would be right up my alley, but I did end up giving this two stars. And again, it's about the characters and how they all kind of sound the same. So in the beginning, I loved Jaunty and his crew of clowns because they were all awkward. They were silly. They were kind of shy and soft-spoken. I thought that was charming. I, I also listened to the audiobook for this, and I liked the narrator and how he presented their voices. But over the course of the book, they started to blend together because even the side characters, you know, the characters who weren't clowns, kind of had that same awkwardness, the sarcasm, that wit. They fed off of each other in the same way that it started to blend together a little bit. But yeah, the premise of this book is that these clowns were fired from the circus. They're down on their luck. They need to find a new job. All the while, these man-eating spiders are attacking the town, and they bring it upon themselves to flip the tables and become the heroes and change everybody's perception of how clowns are. So it's a silly premise. It's, it's meant to be fun and funny. It's not meant to be a, a serious book, but I do still look for these things when I read books because I want to latch on to the characters. I don't want them all to feel the same. Another thing that brought this rating down was stories like this involve a lot of action and you know the Elvis song, a little less conversation, a little more action. That's that's what I got. That's the problem that I ran into <laughs> with this book is that in the middle of action sequences, they would rationalize, they would go back and forth in their awkward way. And I'm sitting here like, guys, these are man-eating spiders. They are not going to wait for you to finish the conversation before they attack you. You either need to hole up in a building and go through your strategy there before you attack or, you know, 
don't and just fight the spiders because you're not going to have time to speak when you're in the middle of a battle. It's not going to work that way. So that lowered the stakes. It kind of killed the action for me. And those are the reasons why I dropped this book down to two stars. The next book is Love, Pamela by Pamela Anderson. This is a memoir by Pamela Anderson, obviously. I've always really enjoyed Pamela Anderson. We also share a birthday. So (laughs) I wanted to learn a little bit more about her, and that's why I picked this up. The beginning of this memoir was jaw-dropping. There were some things that happened during her childhood that made me feel so much for her. And in a way, I expected that throughout the rest of the book. But as she got older and she wrote about the people who were possibly still in her life now, it felt a little bit safe. And I don't really go into memoirs, you know, expecting all of the grit and the hardship and just these terrible things that happened to these celebrities. I I don't necessarily need that. But I also think that she protected the people that she wrote about in a way that made the rest of the memoir come across as, and this is the rest of my life. This is all the other stuff that I did. She talked about her activism. Um, She talked about being a mother. These are all great things, uh, but they didn't really grip me as much, which I hate to say, (laughs) because I think that if she is trying to undo some of the misconceptions about her, I didn't really have any misconceptions. One thing that did surprise me, though, is her writing. Pamela Anderson, I, I've never read anything that she wrote before. She's so poetic. The words that she chooses are so impactful that I think that surprised me the most about this memoir. It's just, you know, some of the things I already knew. Hey, it's Future Jim here. So I didn't even mention anything in this wrap-up about Pamela Anderson's relationship with Tommy Lee or Julian Assange. Uh, But that was kind of part of what I said about really not learning anything new. The information that she put in her memoir are things that I've already heard her talk about. Reading this memoir, I guess I expected to be enlightened a little bit more, but I don't think I was. So I don't think that this memoir was necessarily for me because I feel like I've heard Pamela Anderson speak enough um, to where all of this information was stuff that I feel like I heard before, just not in written form. So back to the wrap up. I did want to clarify that because I feel like an idiot not including (laughs) the two biggest relationships in her life, at least in my opinion. Sorry, I didn't mention it. Yeah, back to the wrap up. Now, after all the fanfare, after all the talking about Play the Fool by Lena Churn, I finally finished it, gave it three stars. <laughs> it's been through a lot, though, with me. It's been through the mids of September to the lows of October, now through my Phoenix moment, I guess, in November. It's been through a lot with me, and it might be a book, since I own it, it might be a book that I revisit later and reread when my mind is a bit more consistent and a bit more clear. But for now, it sits at three stars. There were some inconsistencies with some of the side characters, like Lena Turn would introduce some quirk about a character and say, oh yeah, he does this all the time. And then later on, you see the character again, he doesn't do it at all. (laughs) But yeah, I don't know. This, This read like a cozy mystery. I think that that was the goal. But God, Katie True, the, the main character, she got away with a lot. And her Insta friendship with a police officer, I, I didn't find very realistic. This is this is the story of Katie True, who works at a trinket shop that isn't very well traveled. <laughs> um, she doesn't get very many customers. It's kind of a boring life. And then this bloody guy comes into her store. He stumbles in, runs to the bathroom, leaves his phone on the counter where she opens it up and she finds that her best friend has died. And so this story is about her uncovering the truth about her best friend's death. And she befriends a police officer in the meantime that I just didn't think was very realistic. I don't know. I I didn't know what to think about that friendship between her and the officer because again it happened in a way that I didn't I just couldn't believe you know she would joke about 
doing stupid things, but neither she nor her cop friend, or any of the cops for that matter, really held her accountable for any of the things that she did. Katie was so sneaky. She got away with so much. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand that. That that could just be part of the cozy mystery aspect of this book, which, okay, I understand it. But, you know, there's just so much self-awareness that I can take before, you know, you keep doing the same things that you're, you're self-aware about, but you're not taking any accountability and nobody is holding you to that either. It gets a little frustrating after a while. But I did give this three stars at the end of it because, again, this book and I have been through a lot. It's gone through a lot of moods. And and besides the faults, you know, those aside, I did think that this was a cute book. I, I, I thought it was pretty cute. There was there was something about it that was charming. I did enjoy the tarot angle. I wish that that was played on a little bit more. But, but I did I I did enjoy some of the dialogue. I thought that Katie's commentary on certain things was was cute. I thought that her interactions with her brother and other characters in the story were were just well done. So I can't in good conscience give this a two star rating. I thought it was fine, so I gave it three. The next book on this list is Any Man by Amber Tamblin. First of all, I did not know that Amber Tamblin wrote books. So that's really why I chose this one. There was a lot of talk about it. But this this book, I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. I even told, I, I left a comment on Angelia's video, one of her uh, videos where I said, you know, I'm, I don't really know if I can take a, a heavy book right now. This one was the heaviest book that I read ever. This was very difficult to read. I cannot recommend it to anybody. It is about a serial arpist. She is a woman and the victims are men. So this is another case of flipping a narrative on its head. But the thing is, is that I think this does more than flip a narrative on its head because men are victims of this, of S.A., and there's also this added element of ridicule, not being able to speak out or be believed because men are supposed to be strong and they're supposed to fight off their attackers, which is just so not going to cuss. It's so effed up um, for anybody to fall victim of this and not be believed at all have to live in silence just with the fact that this happened to you and you just have to move on with your life. And I say anybody, you know, this this is a story about men, but as we know, as we've heard so many times, women go through this same thing as well. But this is very hard to read. There were some moments of humor in this book, which I appreciated, but all of it came back to the serial arpist and her identity, finding out who she is. She just goes by this moniker, Maud. Nobody really knows who she is. Um, but you go through the lives of these men, and we, we mostly follow three. So we follow Donald, Jamar, and Pear, but then we are also introduced to three more throughout the story as well. But these three are the the primary focuses, I think. And Donald was a really easy character for me to latch on to in the beginning, I think that he hit the ground running with this story. There were some parts in the story where it tapered off a little bit, but in a way, I appreciated that because I feel like if this book was all intense all the time, I I would have to DNF it because the level of intensity that this book goes is, is very high. Uh, 11 out of 10. So... It's one of those you really have to be careful with, but it goes through the lives of these men, but it also covers social media and how everybody seems to have an opinion about everybody. And it, it, it's, it's so, it'll make you so angry and so frustrated. But the bad thing is, is that this is a reflection of our life and how we are very often the villains of the story because we just can't seem to keep our 
words to ourselves and how we tend to spout off about these things that we know absolutely nothing about. And we try to tell these men and women's stories when we know nothing. It drives me crazy. It drives me crazy when these stories really happen and everybody just seems to have to put in their two cents when they don't know anything. This also goes over how the media covers it and how they use it for entertainment value. Things like this that blow these stories up and turn them into something that they're not and they take away from the people who actually experience the essay it's it's a book that will make you think it'll make you angry it'll make you frustrated it is intense it is explicit the language is probably something that will make you uncomfortable as well it's just unfortunate it's an unfortunate reflection and it makes us look bad as it should I cannot recommend this to anybody, <laughs> um, but I did give it four stars. There were some things that held it back. I did not really care for the ending, but if you do want to read this, you know, look into it, know what you're getting yourself into. This is not a book for the faint of heart. This is not an easy read at all. This is the most explicit, hardest book that I've ever had to read ever. So yeah, just go into this with, the most caution that you've ever had going into a book. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say. There there was one moment that I did want to talk about, but I think that it's better if you would just uh, experience it if you want to read it. But there were a number of places that kind of tore me up. But yeah, sorry for the intensity uh, with that review, but it is something that we face today and it is something that makes me angry. Uh, so yeah, Sorry. You know, we're going we're gonna to move on to the next book. I Survived by Victoria Silliers. This is another memoir. This is one that I gave five stars to. I knew about Victoria Silliers' story before I read this memoir. And I'm trying to think about how I want to talk about this book. Everything is pretty much spelled out for you in the synopsis for this book. But I still wanted to read more despite knowing what she went through. So let me pull up the synopsis real quick and just make sure that I'm not going to spoil anything that this does not say. <laughs> so on Easter Sunday, 2015, experienced skydiver Victoria Silliers undertook a parachute jump, a gift from her husband, British Army Sergeant Emil Silliers. Her parachutes failed to open, and she plummeted 4,000 feet to the ground, sustaining life-threatening injuries. Miraculously, she survived. Then the police arrived at her door. Someone had tampered with her parachute, and they suspected Emil. Okay. That is the synopsis. It's there. <laughs> and that's basically her story. So you do get to learn a little bit about her backstory, which sometimes is hit or miss. But in this memoir, I really appreciated it because you got to understand exactly what she knew. She was a pro at this. This was something that she loved to do. That's why it was a gift from her husband, Emil. So yeah, you, you get to know about her backstory, how she grew up, some of the things that she had to deal with. Her relationships with, with men and how she, you know, trusted or did not trust certain individuals based on her interactions with some of the people that she dated. The book is miraculous. I, this, this one, I, I, I think I got through in, in one sitting or maybe two. The fact that she survived the fall in the first place is, is a miracle. If this were a thriller, and this is something that I put in my review, if this was a fiction book people would think that it was unbelievable and that they were just giving her plot armor but just i i was floored if you want to read this memoir if that sounds interesting to you i would i would absolutely recommend reading this i don't i wouldn't necessarily say that it reads like a thriller but it was pretty pretty thrilling for me it was it was really intense so i would i would definitely recommend reading this one Hey everybody, it's Future Jim. Uh, I just wanted to add in here, I did mention this, but I took it out. There, There is uh, an abusive relationship in this, if you can't tell by the synopsis of this memoir. So do go into this knowing that, and also understand that there are red flags that are missed. There, It, it could be frustrating to you, but um, I would implore you to maybe read this with empathy. Victoria Silliers is a real person. It, it could be frustrating, but it is her story. And I think that it's really important that she share this um, 
that she shared this part of her life. So that's all I wanted to say. Continue on with the video. Enjoy yourself. Um, so the last book on my list is The September House by Carissa Orlando. Back to Michaela at Michaela Reads. This is a book that she, Mary at Books with Tofocado, and also Maddie at As Told by Maddie, are reading or have, have read as a book club pick. I wanted to jump on board with this because I read the premise and thought that it would be really interesting to read. I did not expect <laughs> what I got out of this book. Five-star read. My favorite of the year? Possibly. I have to think about that. But it's up there. It, it's up there. This was a good read. I was not expecting the roller coaster that I got with this book. But as a fan of the movie 13 Ghosts, this was this was kind of reminiscent of that, except these ghosts were much nicer. <laughs> Most of them. Uh, so this is the story of Margaret and her husband, Hal. They have purchased this house that has an extensive history and is haunted by that extensive history. Carissa Orlando is the author, and she talks about how the walls ooze blood, and, and she goes into really gory but wonderful detail about the ghosts and the atmosphere that I just absolutely loved. She added just the right amount of detail where I, I didn't think that she was going over the top. And some of these ghosts, Frederica, I need her in my house. I like to cook, but sometimes I don't want to, and I order out, which is bad. I need her in my house for those days that I don't want to cook <laughs> so that she can cook some of her dishes for me. She was amazing. I loved learning about the backstory of these ghosts and their relationship with Margaret, the main character, who is an older main character, which is something that I'm not used to reading. I do enjoy now. Now I know that I do enjoy older protagonists just because we don't get that so much. But yeah, this is the story of, of them. They move into this house that's haunted. They befriend the ghosts. And at some point, Hal goes missing. He's gone. He leaves the house. Margaret's daughter, Catherine, doesn't know anything about this. She ends up coming to the house, visits after she finds out that Hal, her father, is missing. Um, and you learn about their family dynamic as well with Catherine uh, growing up and Margaret's interaction with Hal, who was honestly very abusive. So you do learn more about that backstory. There was a lot of humor. There were tense moments, sad moments, moments that would make you really frustrated. And you go in this circle of those emotions that I was not expecting when I picked this book up for the first time. It was really great. I never knew what to expect from the chapter that I was reading, but the story was so cohesive. I was able to pick up on certain things that were confirmed later on in the book, but I was able to pick up on them early on, and I felt that that was beneficial. Sometimes I know that it's bad to pick up on certain things too early on because then that just spoils the rest of the book, but I really do appreciate Carissa Orlando's breadcrumbs along the way because had everything come around at the same point, I would have been so overwhelmed <laughs> that I don't know that I would have enjoyed this book as much as I did. So I think this was her debut. She rocked it. Good job, Carissa Orlando. Keep writing, please. Um, I actually looked her up on Instagram and I couldn't find anything. I can't find her social media at all, but I wanted to follow her just in case, you know, um, but I couldn't find anything. Maybe she has something out there, but since she's a new author, maybe it's not like an official page or whatever, but awesome book. One of, if not my favorite book of the year. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say about that. I think I covered everything. It was just really well done. I don't have any negatives. I think I gave this fives across the board. So yeah, good job. <laughs> Yay, you. If you are interested in any of the books that I talked about in this wrap-up, the Goodreads links are in the description below. Check those out. Go to the retailer of your choice and purchase them, or head on over to your library or use your library app to borrow them. Otherwise, I have been Jim, 
you've been great. Happy reading.